is on to the fourth quarter. And the Cavaliers have to be very pleased with what turns out to be their best third quarter of the series. Well, relatively speaking, that was like the Showtime Lakers in the third <laughs> quarter. I mean, 19 points. They finally won a quarter. And I think the key is, you know, what you talked about, Doug, getting the ball inside. I mean, look at these shots. They made five hoops in the lane area. They also got to the free throw line. So the key was not settling for outside jumpers. They got good ball movement. It was a much better quarter. They played with good confidence. And they're in a position now where, you know, they've got this crowd scared. I don't sense that the Pistons feel overly confident. Cleveland's in position right now to pull off the upset. And, you know, LeBron James said in games three and four, keep me close in the fourth quarter and I'll find a way to win the game. And these are the kind of games that superstars take over on the road. And, again, I'm going to get back to the Detroit Pistons in games one and two. Rasheed Wallace was so good in the fourth quarters. They need him now. He was 3 for 4 in the first quarter, 8 points since then, 0 for 3, he's not scored. And remember, these two teams met in the Eastern Conference semifinals last year. Detroit, the 1 in 7, a tip by Barajal. And the Cavaliers have taken a, a two-point lead, but in that series, Detroit won the first two games easily. Cleveland won the next three, including Game 5 here at the Palace, and then Detroit pulled it out by winning game six and seven to take the series. Got clocked to five. Hunter, who just checked back in, got the step. Brown wanted a goal ten on Barajal. Well, Mark, to get back to your point, we asked Flip Saunders, is this a better Cavs team this year or last year? He said, no question. This is a better team. They were better in the regular season. They're more solid, more experienced. And he knows his team's in a big fight here. And, and how much time can they buy with LeBron James resting right now? Normally, we've seen him play the entire second half, and these are the close games. And in, the, in games one and two, Detroit found a way to win. In games three and four, Detroit winning, going into both fourth quarters they lost those games and the team that has won the fourth quarter in every game in the series has won the game a minute gone by here in the fourth Ron James getting a rest he's on the bench here's Hughes attempting a three a late whistle he is fouled by Prince Bob Delaney made the call on the release and that'll be three free throws for Hughes well, it looked to me like Prince got him on the arm. I mean, he, he was really crowding him, and this is something that we've seen called a lot more frequently this year than in the past. And he gets his hand, looks like he hits him right on the hand on the follow-through. You know, tough to tell you know, whether it was a foul or not. I, I always felt as a shooter, if a guy hits your hand, how are you supposed to make the shot? And you hear this hand's part of the ball stuff. I, I don't buy it, man. I think that's a foul. These are big free throws here because, again, LeBron James is resting, and normally he has not had the ability to do this. We've seen him play most every second half all the way through. So if they can keep the lead, even build on the lead, where he can come in and finish it. Here's a 68% free throw shooter during the regular season. Larry Hughes has given the Cavs more than they expected. He came out and hit the two threes early on. Once he got a question mark as to whether he would play. And only one of three at the line. Hughes has nine points in 26 minutes. Playing with four fouls. Cavaliers lead 73-70. They scored the last eight points. Wallace making the turn and fouled by Varga. Let's check in with Craig Sager. Craig? Well, Mark, during those three free throws by Larry Hughes, LeBron James stood up, started to go in. Mike Brown said, no, hold back. Not yet, not yet, not yet. So uh, LeBron biting his tongue and chewing his fingernails over there, waiting to get back into the game. Well, That's quite a feat. <laughs> yeah. All at once. <laughs> Be double jointed, I think, <laughs> which is possible for a minute and a half. Got by on the fourth. A lot of feeling for Varja. Able to feed him off the dribble. Now, you see the emotion. I mean, that, that's what they need from him. And, and the emotion that's not over the edge. The emotion that takes him to that point, but where he can produce and be good for his team. I think back to what Don Nelson said about the Warriors. You know, after they were eliminated from the playoffs, he says, 
we have to play with emotion or we're not any good, but we got to find a way to walk that line. Same case with Rishi Wallace. There's Gibson. Boom. Banks it home. What a beautiful shot by the rookie from Texas, Daniel Gibson. 11 points for Gibson. Three point Cavalier lead. Game six of this series back in Cleveland on Saturday night of here on TNT. Jump back to three. Phillips from downtown. And the long rebound is handled by Ilkowskis. Well, Cleveland brought the double team. They, they don't want Wallace to get going. He's made two good moves in a row down on the post. So bring the double. Be aggressive with it for somebody else to make a shot. But the confidence in the rookie rider, he's running this play that normally LeBron runs, and he steps up, he misses the shot, but they are confident having that ball in his hands. Prince met by Hughes. Phillips brought it by Gibson. Weber spinning his way, and hooks it home. Uh, the, the mistake Ilgowskis made was he let Weber get back to that right hand. You, you know Weber doesn't want to finish with his left. Doesn't have a left-handed hook. So Ilgowskis slid over too far and allowed Weber to get to the right hand. Chris Weber, 6 of 9, 13 points. He has been effective, although he's in foul trouble. We'll be back to Detroit in a moment. Back at the Palace, time for Steve's refreshing thoughts, sponsored by Ford Light. Steve, well, Marv, I think we're going to see LeBron James come back into the ball game here, and you know, talking about young superstars. My question tonight, my refreshing thought is, who's the only NBA player in history to win an NBA championship before the age of 23, and average 20 plus points in the regular season? Dougie always ties it together. There's always education involved. Yeah, here. and there's got to be something with this guy going, oh, there we go. Oh, Kobe okay. Bryant. You know he's been yeah. in the media, so I oh, figured Steve was going somewhere no, with that. I was just I'm wondering what Kobe's been up to. I'm probably enjoying a nice <laughs> summer vacation. Maybe getting Very ready quiet. for next year. Yeah. I haven't heard much from him. 8.40 to go. In the fourth quarter, LeBron James back on the floor. Mike Brown taking that uh, timeout in order to uh, reinsert LeBron. Here's Ilgowskis. Yes! And the foul. A strong move by Zagrudis Ilgowskis. If it's Weber, it's number five. Well, this is the move that he likes to make. We saw the counter fading away. This one, he likes to come across. And I can't remember when he started shooting that shot one-handed, where he took the left hand off the ball. But he's been doing that like the last couple years. I don't know if it gives him more extension to get away from the defense, but... Uh, the one-handed sort of a subway hook. And it is number five on Weber. Do you say a subway Well, you know, the sky hook with green, that was a subway hook. I That's see. Coming from Very good. So Chris Weber playing with the five fouls. Antonio McDice ejected late first quarter. And the tip by Weber, the flip saunter staying with, with Weber. He's been bringing on Jason Maxiel and and Dale Davis said apparently he will stay uh, with Weber. He looked down the bench and then changed his mind. Wallace all over Ilgowskis. Ilgowskis crashing with teammate Anderson Varejao. That was a 4-5 pick and roll right there. <laughs> Varejao came over and screened pick and, Rashid. Pick and fall, I think. It wasn't much of a roll. Sure didn't look like Phoenix's play, no. that's for sure. Cavaliers up by three. Ogowski is six of eight from the field. He has 16 points. Shot clock to five. There's Prince. Just to get it off on time. Weber not able to come through with the tip. He thought he was fouled. Uh, I thought he was fouled. That, that's the second time they've gone to that little play to get the switch on Prince. And Gibson again doing a nice job, although Cleveland is bringing a double team. The steal by Wallace. And Phillips is fouled. Foul by Gibson. A good foul with Phillips on the move. Let's check in with Craig. Well, Marv, the question was raised. Is there a possible one-game suspension for Antonio McDice for that flagrant two foul he picked up in that first half? 
Stu Jackson, Senior Vice President of Basketball Operations, is here. I talked to him a moment ago and asked him for his thoughts. He goes, I need to review the replays more, have a better decision tomorrow. I will be on a 7 a.m. flight to Orlando for the NBA pre-draft camp. I will look at the tape, talk to my staff, and I will make a decision tomorrow afternoon. But there is a chance he could be suspended. Mark. All right, Craig, here's Hamilton. Hamilton brings the Pistons within one. Now, remember in the fourth quarter the other night when they played Daniel Gibson on Rip Hamilton, he took his time, got to the shooting area, jumped over him. That's exactly what he did, the first possession coming off the bench there. Gilgauskas, Phillips reaching for it, and he is fouled. That is not a good foul as uh, Gibson tripped up Phillips. That's three on Gibson and the Cavaliers with their third team foul for not shooting a pair. Six and a half remaining in the fourth quarter. Detroit down by one. Hamilton. Oh, he felt some contact. And can't believe that he did not get the call. James, yes. Well, we saw Mike Brown, as soon as the change of possession occurred, he was waving his team up the floor to get it up there. I think both clubs need to do that because these two defenses are too good in the half court. I think it would, it would be good for both clubs to really push the ball and try to get early offense. 21 points for LeBron James, along with nine rebounds, seven assists. Weber, back tap, good job by Prince. Hamilton with an opening, and he is fouled. He is a Marajo, involved in that collision. The foul is on Gibson, number four on Gibson. A timeout taken just under five and a half to play here in the fourth. A emotionally charged meeting in this game five of the series. The drama. Well, LeBron James' fourth quarters have sort of been a tale of two different cities. You see the two games in Detroit really struggled only seven points. Remember game one, the criticism for not taking the last shot. In game two, he did. They thought there was a contact not called. So you can see what his numbers. Not the case in games three and four. He took over in both of those games. Tonight, uh, he's sitting on uh, 19 points after the third quarter. He's one for one here. Five minutes and 28 seconds to go. He's the best individual player on the floor. Let's see if he has the ability to give his team a 3-2 lead going back to Cleveland. Well, and he did get the first three minutes and 20 seconds on the bench to rest. And you, know, you said something during the break. Cleveland does look fresher right now. They, 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 they're a little more athletic, obviously, with LeBron. But they look a little bouncier. Detroit, maybe a, maybe a little tired. I mean, this has been a, a difficult week for them, losing a couple of games. They lose McDice. Their big men have had to play a lot of minutes. Wallace has not had his game going, so not a, not much of a, a bounce to the step of the Detroit Pistons. And this is five straight years they have gone to the conference finals or beyond to the finals, so they've played a lot of games over the last five seasons. Cavaliers now lead at 81-80 as we come up on five minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. This James, turned back by Wallace. The see Wallace saw the rejection of LeBron James. Oh! Call made away from the ball against the Cavaliers. It is on Pavlovich, and the Cavs are over the limit. Well, LeBron James takes this ball right into the teeth of the defense, and this is a terrific, well, it looked like he brought the left wrist as he was coming down, but the good block was called. And remember now, in the first two games of this series in Detroit, Rasheed had nine block shots. He was the back line of that defense, only three in the two games in Cleveland. So they're going to need him to protect the basket. Hamilton, nine for nine at the line. 
That was a blocked wrist right there. I don't even think he touched the ball, so LeBron had every right to complain. What is impressive about the Pistons here tonight, Chauncey Billups, who's had turnover problems, has not committed a turnover. And Detroit with just one turnover in the second half, none the last 20 minutes of play, and they have taken an 82-81 lead. Just under five minutes left in the fourth. Remember now, Detroit started trapping late in the fourth quarter of game four. Tip missed by Barajah, but Pavlovich is on it. Here's Pavlovich going glass. Offensive foul on Pavlovich. Maybe a little rushed. I mean, this isn't really Pavlovich's game, but watch the off arm. He goes up. Prince, so long, you see Pavlovich using that left arm to fend off Prince. Good call by the officials. Hamilton changed his mind. Wallace not able to put it down. What a foul call. It is on Ilgowskis. That's his fifth. I like this substitution by Mike Brown, though. He's coming in with Drew Gooden. With Verizal on the floor, you get activity and some offensive rebounding. But with Drew Gooden out there, when LeBron penetrates, you've got another spot-up shooter that you can throw the ball to, either Pavlovich or uh, Daniel Gibson. you got got uh, Ilgowskis that will shoot the open shot. So I think they need another offensive player on the floor right now. Wallace at the line, a 77% free throw shooter during the regular season. He's hit his uh, two earlier attempts. In six of this Eastern Conference Final will take place back in Cleveland Saturday night. We'll have it for you right here on TNT starting 8 o'clock Eastern time. And if there's a game seven, that'll be Monday night back at the Palace here in Detroit. And uh, right here on TNT starting 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Thursday, June 7th on ABC. It'll be game one of the NBA Finals. The winner between the Cavs and Pistons will take on the San Antonio Spurs. Spurs concluding matters last night in convincing fashion against the Utah Jazz. 6 0 run here by Detroit. All six points on free throw. Gibson for three. Good miss the tip. Hamilton open. Yes. Mike Brown wants to talk it over. The and Cleveland just one of five at the foul line. Good at the line for the first time tonight mentioned earlier how the Cavs have struggled during the regular season at the free throw strike but have picked it up in the postseason. And when Detroit took this lead, it was at the foul line. They're 8 of 8 in this quarter, so the differential right now is that free throw line that we spoke about. Two and a half remaining in the fourth quarter. Shot clock to five. Here's Hamilton with the runner. Rebound. And Mike Brown went with Eric Snow to come into the game for defensive purposes, which slid Pavlovich over to Hamilton. And he felt he had to get size on it. Oh, LeBron James drills it from downtown to bring the Cavaliers within one. Why don't we just put two minutes on the clock and play? <laughs> I mean, that's what it's come down to every game. Last possession. 26 points. For James. Here's Phillips. Lost it. And comes James. Wallace is back. James streaking. And he is fouled. Rasheed Wallace was turned around as LeBron put the speed on. And he will go to the line. Well, interestingly enough, Eric Snow comes behind, knocks the, uh, the ball out, and you cannot backpedal when you play against LeBron James. You have to sprint. Now he has to go to the line and see if he can make a couple free throws. Of how quick that lead has dissipated if he knocks both of these down. James five and six at the line. The foul on Wallace is third, so both teams are now over the limit. And the Cavaliers are killing themselves at the foul line. This is more like the team we saw in the regular season. Oh, the 29th, I think, in the NBA, and foul shooting about 70%.
has a two of eight at the line of the fourth quarter, and James misses both. This is after hitting all five of his free throw attempts in game four in well, the fourth quarter. He had a lot of chance to put pressure on Detroit, put them down by one, see what they were going to do under this kind of pressure. And now you wonder, does he attack the rim late, you know, in the last two minutes, having missed his last few? And at 40 left in the fourth, Detroit by one. They double up on Wallace, try to get it down low. Pass intended for Maxio, and again, the Pistons turn it over. Avalovich not even thinking about a shot. How about Eric Snow? They bring him in, and he gets two steals. The Pistons only had one turnover the entire second half. Phillips on James. Shot clock at five. Here is Good. A wide open shot from in close for Good. We've seen that shot all series. LeBron getting loaded up on defensively, just trying to pick the defense apart. Can't ask for much more than that. That little look from Drew Good. Timeout is called by Detroit with 54 seconds to go in the fourth quarter and the Pistons clinging to a one-point lead. Uh, the Cavaliers the last two tonight, 18 to 17. A lot of game to be played. Question, Marv, is coming out of this timeout, where is Detroit going to go offensively to try to get a hoot? See, I think maybe if Snow hadn't come back into the ball game, you would have seen Rip Hamilton run off some screens. They like that matchup with Hamilton and Gibson, but Snow has changed the defensive dynamic of this game now. His size is, is able, he's able to guard uh, Chauncey Billups. That slides Pavlovich to Hamilton. And Pavlovich can bother Hamilton, so I think you go to Rasheed down on the block. That's usually what Detroit likes to do. Pistons have 12 on the shot clock. Phillips played by Snow. Out of five on the 24. Out of three. Wallace lost it. And the call by Ron Garrison, last touch by Rasheed Wallace. Three consecutive turnovers by the Pistons. And again, Marv, they'd only had one the entire the second half. Eric Snow knocks two balls loose. That time it's Verjao with good hands. That's exactly where they went uh, to Rashid. Remember, he fronted him in game two. He faked the, the, the foul and he fell down, and Rashid hit that incredible shot to win game two. Another opportunity for the Cavaliers to take the lead. They're down by one. Max Steele defending on James. LeBron with the stop. Oh, that stops. 89-88 Cleveland. Here's Phillips for the three. Pistons 91. Cavaliers 89. Timeout Cleveland. Hesitation on the part of Chauncey Phillips, who was questioned for several of the decisions that he made in the fourth quarter of game number four. You can't be scared. I mean, you know, you got to take big shots without fear, and that's why he makes so many of them. He missed the one in game four from about the same spot, although it was in transition. But what a huge shot after the LeBron James dunk sucked the life out of this crowd. Pistons back on top. For game one of this series here at the Palace. Final seconds. Cavaliers down by two. LeBron on the drive gave it up. Daniel Marshall, potential game winner from downtown, did not drop. Pistons won it. Game two, closing seconds. Cavs down by one. Here's LeBron on the drive. He missed. Larry Hughes with the open angle jumper. And Marja had a, a shot of the. At a tip, but the Pistons hang out and win at 79-76. Now, Marv, how about the ramifications of that three of Billups? If he misses it, look at the shot clock there. They would have had to foul. The clock would have been turned off. They would have been down one and had to foul. What a big shot. And now Lindsey Hunter in the ball game to guard LeBron James. Out of 15 seconds. Out of 10. James with the step. 
and the game is tied at 91 with 9.5 to go in the fourth quarter, and the Pistons take a timeout. LeBron James said that should have been an and one. He thought he got chested on that play, but you got to give LeBron James, I mean, a lot of credit. He misses two free throws, Steve. You wondered if he was going to go back to the basket. He goes back with a vengeance, back-to-back -back slam dunks. And four guards on the floor for Detroit because Hunter came into the game for defensive purposes, but that left one fewer big man on the floor. This was two possessions to go after the Max Seal switch, and that's why Foot Saunders decided to get Max Seal out of there. He felt like if there was going to be a switch, he wanted a guard on LeBron rather than a big man. But then what happens? Once he gets into the lane, no shot blocking there, and LeBron has his way. 30 points for LeBron James, 11 of the 30 here in the fourth quarter. The last six minutes of this fourth quarter, the Cavaliers with only five field goals, all five by LeBron. Well, he said, get me to the fourth quarter with a chance to win, and I will win the game. We'll see. Game tied here. Can Detroit find a way to win this at the end? Nine and five, ten seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. Come back to ten. Down to three. Down to two. Here's Phillips for the win. We head to overtime. Whoa, that ball missed by about an inch or two. And that was down, and it just rimmed out. This crowd was waiting to explode. How about what a pro, though, Eric Snow is? The guy's been sitting on the bench. Gets put in crucial situations. He gets in the air, and he avoids a foul. Look like Chauncey. Watch Chauncey. Pumps him in the air. He actually leaves his feet but stays away from the foul. We've seen a couple strips and steals late. Eric Snow has helped get his team defensively into the overtime. On the pregame, we were talking about how evenly matched this series has been when you look at the uh, statistics and coming into tonight, series tied at two. How about tonight? Well, we're headed to overtime at 91 apiece. Cavaliers, 31 field goals. Pistons, 30. Look at free throw attempts. This game has been tied nine times. 17 lead changes. Detroit did lead by as, as many as eight. And Cleveland, at one point, led by as many as three. Well, it looked like Detroit had pushed and got a nice cushion. And I thought LeBron, they were down seven. He drove in there and got a three-point play opportunity that gave his team some hope. I thought it got them back and feeling they could win the game. And then the spectacular dunks, he hits a three. I mean, he took over offensively. But Eric Snow, two steals, the defensive play on Chauncey Billups there at the end, helped get his team into the final, uh, this five-minute overtime. Cavaliers ended regulation on a 10-3 run to lead to this uh, OT. And the Cavaliers control. The snow remains on the floor, along with Ilgowskis, Pavlovich, Marshall, and James. Here's LeBron, and he was fouled. Pistons claim he was not in the act of shooting, but Ben Salvatore with the indication that it was a shot attempt. Remember that good rest that LeBron got to start the fourth quarter? He's got very fresh legs right now. We're seeing a very bouncy guy getting to the lane. Uh, we, uh, like he's going to go to the line and shoot two here. Let's see if he can dis rediscover that uh, free throw shooting touch. And, and you wonder if that call wasn't a result of maybe LeBron complaining at the end. But hey, I got bumped. That should have been an and one on the game tying shot with nine seconds left. You know, it, it's, uh, you, you plant that seed in the official's mind, and you know you might get the next one. Steve, with experience of working the official. <laughs> Not that I ever went to the line, but I saw other people do it. Foul was on Prince, his fourth, and uh, this time LeBron hits on both, so the Cavaliers now lead at 93-91. Five-minute overtime session. Marv Albert with Doug Collins, Steve Kerr, Craig Sager. We're at the Palace of Auburn Hills. Wallace draws the foul. And that lands on uh, one of the uh, photographers along the baseline. Foul is called on Good. That is his fifth. So five apiece on Good and Ilgowskis for Detroit. Five on Weber. Five on the Detroit can sort of play off of. The only thing you would worry about with Virgil is getting to the offensive boards. Correction four on Hamilton. See the, uh, the foul rundown. Five 
piece on Rogalskis, Gibson, and Good. I think now would be a good time for Cook Saunders to go back to that zone that, that has bothered Cleveland late in ball games earlier in this series. LeBron really has it going now. You've got Chris Weber on the floor, so Cleveland can put Weber in a screen and roll on the perimeter. And LeBron's rolling. He's getting to the basket. I think you've got to change your defenses. That's your strength anyway if you're Detroit. And you've got one less shooter out on the floor instead of Daniel Gibson. You've got Eric Snow for defense. What a six of six at the line, and the game is tied at 93. Good comes out to set the screen. Havlovich. And he's called for an offensive foul. He actually had nowhere to go. He was hoping to draw a foul. Very good move, though, by Flip Saunders to go back to this defense. Now you're going to make other guys make plays. But with LeBron at the top of the floor, they're trapping him. And there's the play he calls him running over. So Detroit once again to the basketball and the chance to take the lead. Wallace. And Pavlovich and Prince came together. Loose ball foul is called on Pavlovich. Not shooting foul. I think that may have been LeBron James. Yeah, the call was on LeBron. As Prince went up for that rebound, LeBron just got a little push on him just to knock him off balance. It is uh, the second on James. Here's Hamilton. Yes. 24 points for Rip Hamilton. Pistons lead 95-93. There's James <laughs> off the pass for Nogalski. They took him off the ball at that time. And a nice play to put Eric Snow at the top and a little give and go that time. LeBron James with a beautiful cut. 34 for James. He scored 15 of the last 16 points for Cleveland. Wallace got the step and drew the foul. Well, Doug, you talked about taking LeBron off the ball because sometimes the defense focuses so much on him that when he has the ball, it's easier to contain him. You take him off the ball, run him back door, all of a sudden there's not nearly as much attention paid to him. Beautiful pass from Ilgauskas. I like it. I'd like to see Cleveland do more of that. Foul committed by Drew Gooden. That is number six. So he has fouled out. Seven points, six rebounds for Gooden. Now Daniel Gibson back in, as does Anderson Varejao. So it's sort of interesting when, when you bring Varejao in, you take Snow out because I think Mike Brown, Brown recognizes you got to have somebody out there that can shoot the ball. You don't want to have two guys that Detroit does not have to guard. Wallace with his first miss after hitting for six at the line. Pistons by one. Game five of the Eastern Conference Final. The series tied at two. Game six back in Cleveland on Saturday night. And right here on TNT, three minutes to go in overtime. Ben's met by the double. Shot clock to five. Here's LeBron, and he is fouled. LeBron's got to be very careful, no extracurricular activity. Remember, he's already picked up one technical. He's got to keep his cool. He and Rip Hamilton sort of bumped one another there at the end of this play. Watch uh, LeBron now as he goes up strong. He's fouled. Watch at the end of the play here. Got to be very, very careful. Keep your cool now. That was number four on Wallace. Game seven of ten at the line. Game is tied at 96. And Mike Brown doing some shuffling. Ogauskas makes his return. So 16 of the last 17 Cleveland points scored by LeBron James. Mark, you grew up with this. The little Red Holzman offensive defensive substitution here. So you should be well aware of this. I'm looking for Mike Rick to come out and give a foul. <laughs> Just under three left 
in overtime. Wallace on the low block. Weber looks to save it and does. Another possession for the Pistons. Wallace for three. Rebounded by Ilkowskis. Coming up on two minutes left in overtime. You got your defensive players on the floor now, Barrage Allen Snow, so not nearly as much shooting. Shot clock to six. James. Wallace rebound. See, that's why he had to settle for that shot. He tried five players in the lane. They didn't have to bother to guard Snow or Barrage Allen. Keep moving around. Prince met by Snow. They clear it out. Shot clock to five. Prince. Phillips with the tip. And Pavlovich protects the rebound. Cavaliers take a timeout. That's to get his offensive players on the court. Minute 37 to go. It's a big possession. You get a score, you get a chance to take the lead. Back on the floor with Gibson and maybe Daniel Marshall. The problem there is if they don't score, you flip side, you go to the other way, and all of a sudden they don't have their best defender, defensive players on the court. And I think Flip Saunders would recognize that and not use the timeout. So he would say, just push it yeah. up and go. So this one, it gets fun from the coaching aspect of it, where you start, you know, playing that little chess game. Fun, did you say? Fun. <laughs> fun, yeah. fun when you're at the yeah. analyst. Fun right. for me. Yeah. On the table here, fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't having any fun sitting over there. But... <laughs> LeBron James has scored 16 of the last 17 Cavalier points. Coming up big again in the fourth quarter. He had 11 in the fourth. Maxiel jumping out. And uh, LeBron tried that pass off the dribble for uh, Barjo was cutting. And fortunately for the Cavaliers, it was deflected out of bounds by Detroit. I personally would not have had the guts yeah, to throw that pass. High risk Man. pass. 11 on the shot clock, and Gibson could not find anybody, so takes a, a timeout. I never like my point guard throwing the ball in. He's too small to see over Tayshawn Prince. The most important thing in that situation is getting the ball in. Now you You've got to continue to attack. Put the pressure on the defense, even if you miss the free throws. I mean, you're still in good shape. In the James, who was shaken up on the inbound. 11 on the shot clock. Gets it into Barajal. Phillips went down, and Cook Saunders looking for a pushing foul on, on James. Here's LeBron flipping it up and draws the foul. Pistons wanted a charge. Instead, James, who was shaken up and had nowhere to go with a couple of Pistons in front of him, but he'll head to the line for two. I love the fact that he's showing no fear in attacking the rim despite his free throw troubles, despite some of the criticism he's received in the past. You've got to continue to attack. Put the pressure on the defense, even if you miss the free throws. I mean, you're still in good shape in this game. But you got to keep putting pressure on that piston D. Because you see in the fourth quarter in overtime, Cleveland 5 of 13 from the line, Detroit 11 of 12. This is the play right there that they wanted to push off. No call in that situation, and then you drive the ball to the basket. Put the onus on the referees to make the call. That's the essence of plays at the end of the game. Referees love when you shoot jump shots, so they don't have to be in peril than a blow in the whistle. LeBron is now 9 for 13 at the line, and the Cavaliers have a one-point lead. And the key here is, rather than you know getting a bucket and being in transition, they go to the foul line, so now Mike Brown makes his defensive substitution, and Cleveland in pretty good shape at the other end of the floor. James hits both, 98-96, Cleveland with 1.15 left. In overtime. Hamilton played by Pavlovich. 
Try to squeeze his way and then flip it to Prince. Prince guarded by James. LeBron did a good job. And the, the pass ends up in the backcourt. It's a violation. Tayshawn Prince under pressure from the defensive play of LeBron James and turned it over. And the worst thing that happens to Detroit is now you bring your best yeah. offensive player. So the last two possessions have worked beautifully for Cleveland. You see that LeBron James does a nice job of bodying out Tayshawn Prince and Eric Snow plays the passing lane, bad pass. I, I, I think that's been a huge theme of this series, Doug. The, the, just the, the post defense of the perimeter players for Cleveland. It, it, Tayshawn Prince has not been able to get the same advantage that he had in that Chicago series and earlier against Orlando. Down to 50 seconds left in overtime. Cleveland in possession, and they're up by two. Here's the pick set by Varja. Got clock to five. James has to fire. And oh. Oh. Oh my! What a shot by LeBron James, off balance, shot clock running down, he had no angle, and he drilled it. This has been some kind of performance by this young guy. We, you know, we, all the criticism that this young guy took in the first two games, the last three games, in the fourth quarter he has been spectacular. Still a lot of time to go, a four-point game, but LeBron James, a superstar, growing up in the playoffs. for LeBron James and Cleveland leads by two 102 to 100 now Cavs down again with 152 left James again nails the jumper behind the back to get away from Chauncey Billups and it rattles in 104 104 to 150 left now 90 seconds left look at Chris Weber shoved and one three-point lead Weber had 20 points Cavs down by three need a three James clutch 107, 107, 11 seconds left. How would the Pistons play LeBron James? Force him to pass, make him shoot free throws. Only a 71% shooter this year, but now he gets in the lane and gets a layup. And the Cavaliers have a lead. James, watch it again, locked in on the clock, makes his move aggressive, gets hacked there, not called, powers through, and converts 25 consecutive Cavalier points. 46 points for James, a new playoff high for him. Go on and get 48 after the layup. Billups, one more chance. That is deflected by Varejao, and Cleveland goes on to win game five. What Caleb Folliwell is to Kings of Leon, King James is to the Cavs. He scores all 18 overtime points. The last 25 and 29 of the last 30, the Cavs can advance to their first NBA final with a win Saturday night in Cleveland. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son. Throughout this whole game, we, we played the same way. Um, the same way we played in games one and two. And we couldn't, we couldn't leave out of here without getting at least one win, just as well as we've played in this building. Um, and that, that was just my mindset. Uh, he said uh, the other night, he said, hey, we're a no-excuse team. I also said it, and he showed it tonight. He just kept attacking, and he didn't quit. Because he didn't quit, the rest of the team didn't quit. The last overtime, you know, we was trapping him, and he was just beating the, double, beating the trap, raising up, shooting, you know, shooting tough, tough shots. And the guy can shoot and make shots like that is really not much that you can do about that. Kipling and LeBron share a birthday, sure. December 30th. All right, let's relive this amazing series between the Pistons and the Cavs. Game one, LeBron passes to Danielle Marshall. He misses the three. James did not attempt a free throw in that game. Game two, drives lane, misses. Larry Hughes misses the follow, and the Pistons win to go up two games to zero. James, 19 points. Game three in Cleveland, LeBron makes a long jumper with 16 seconds left. Gives the Cavs a four-point lead, 32 points in 46 minutes. Game four, two free throws with four seconds left to ice the game. Cavs win. James 8 of 9 from the line in game 4 and then game 5 Thursday night. The game for his age. Mike Tirico, Hubie Brown called the game on ESPN Radio. Hubie, you've been around this league for a long time. Tell me 
why that was so good, and in your mind, how special the performance by James was. Well, I have to, you have to start off with the, the pressure of the game. Right. Game five on the road, in the house of one of the best teams in basketball. Then you're playing against an outstanding defensive team. They have two people on you at all times. And if you split the double team, here comes the third guy. It's almost like one against three. Now you have to elevate in the air whether you are going to the basket or you're going away from the basket. Some of the shots and the distance of the shots where he had absolutely nothing with one or two seconds on the clock, the elevation, the turning in the air, and he made it look like it was a layup. Absolutely incredible. So you think one of the best performances you've seen in the playoffs? Oh, they'll be running this on ESPN Classic for years and years and years when they're talking about him after he retires. Because not only the shots, but only, come on, limited uh, assists in 109 points, and he had seven of the assists. That's, that's spectacular. Yeah, Cleveland had 13 assists on the night. LeBron had seven. He had all the points at the end, and the Cavs are someplace they've never been. One win from the NBA Finals. Back to you. LeBron James sets a franchise record for points in a playoff game. Well, the Cavaliers did it against a team not known for allowing big games. The 48 points were the most the Pistons have allowed to an opponent during their five-year run of reaching the conference finals. If it's good enough for the conference finals, the Cavaliers' LeBron James had a game for the ages against Detroit. Final moment. King James soaring for the throwdown. It's all even at 91 after regulation. They go to double overtime. Tied at 107. James driving for the go-ahead bucket with only two seconds left. He had 48 scoring. The Cavs' final 25 points. Pistons have time to force triple overtime. Chauncey Billups cannot get the runner to fall. Cavs take it 109 to 107. They lead the series 3 to 2. They can wrap it up on Saturday in Cleveland. Baseball. Age 22 to be exact. More on the King and his wondrous work with the Royal Orb Thursday. Billy Donovan. And the signature game in the young career of LeBron James, only 22. He scores 48, and the Cavs are one win away from the NBA Finals. Mark Morgan with more. John, thanks very much. Jamal Mashburn and Alan Houston are alongside, and we're trying, guys, to figure out the right adjectives to describe LeBron James' transcendent performance in Game 5. You both played in the playoff pressure cooker. Mash, where do you start? Well, you start with the word exciting and also empowering his teammates and building confidence. And when you look at LeBron James on that big stage, everything is magnified. When I played in the playoffs, everybody criticizes your mistakes, and they look at your good things that you do. I mean, they dissect everything. So on that stage at 22 years old, to have the mentality and the mental toughest to go out there and close games out and also facilitate. It's amazing that LeBron James is in this situation. He's putting the Cleveland Cavaliers on his back and headed to the final. Well, absolutely. I, I look at this as his commitment to greatness. And if you look at what he's gone through over this past week, I think he's made as much progress in this past week as he's made in four years. He set a standard for himself, for his teammates, and now he's risen to the occasion at the highest level, at the highest stakes. He's played his best and that's really what the greatest do all the time that's what he's doing right now so I really look at this as his commitment to go to the next level and now if I'm LeBron James I say what else do you want me to do I've done that now get to the NBA finals and I think that's really the next step for him is to get to that championship and he has a chance to do it LeBron James a game for the ages John back to you I ain't never did that in college, I tell you that. <laughs> no, he didn't. It's amazing he had a game like that. All right, 48 points, 9 rebounds, 7 assists. Only one other player in NBA history reached each of those levels in a postseason game, and Michael Jordan, it was him. He did it in the first round against the Hornets in 95, back when